Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Sit Down, your favorite podcast that's run by an Italian, I'm pretty sure. Right? Yeah, I would wager that. Anyway, nice to be here. There's a hair in your tea. I'm really sorry. I can't do anything right. Fuck. I'm so fucking stupid. Um, whoops, my bad. Well, guys, <laughs> I might put hair, I might put pubic hair in Deborah's tea, but I do want to let you know that I, uh, on pa- we're having a lot of fun over on Patreon, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you think these good. episodes are boring? They're really good behind the paywall. <laughs> um, I'm not very good at sales, but, uh, I do want to say that. You should um, subscribe if you can. Five yes. bucks a month, you get a show every single day. We got a lot of good guests. We've talked to, I don't know, some cool people. Some cool people: Will Maneker, uh, Stavros, uh, and, Jared Freed. Uh, Jared Freed. So head on over there, give us some money. And if you want, if you want to support me directly, Michael Michael dot Michael dash Racine dash two is my Venmo. So. Mm-hmm. I know it well. He Venmo's me for like Ven- 50 cents. I, yeah, I Venmo request Deborah all the time. It's yeah. good. It's, it's, I think it's healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, how's it going, sweetheart? It's, go- it's going well. Yeah. Um, I'm not very good at you? sales, I'm, I'm, You're not? I've noticed. But no. you told me you were an excellent salesman and you bought yeah. expensive I when I, shirts. Yeah, when I, when, I, when I bought into that lifestyle, I think I, I think I was. I actually did think about a couple of days ago. like, Or maybe you're having, just better at selling somebody else's product. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> it's not that I don't believe in myself. It, it's that it, it just does. It feels very silly to be like, look, I am so great. I'm awesome. Mm-hmm. I was looking at this. Um, somebody shared this like old letter that Ellen sent to a comedy club. Mm-hmm. And she was like, if you are looking for a clean feature act, I am very good and very. And it's like, it's just weird to talk about yourself that way. But yes, right. yes, I think I could sell someone else's product. You know? Yeah. Um, and it's weird. You get to a point in any job where you have to like describe yourself in the yeah. third person a lot on yeah, paper. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. It's like Deborah Brooks. She's a speech language pathologist. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> she makes coloring pages. Yeah. That was the worst part of a job interview when they mm-hmm. were like, th- this only happened to me once. Right. But uh, a guy was in- interviewing me for a job one time and he goes, okay, so what are your strengths? And I was like, oh, you know, I'm on time. I'm, you know, yeah. innovative. I'm creative. Uh-huh. I'm like, and he's like, okay, and what would you say your weaknesses are? Mm-hmm. And I was just like, oh, man, weaknesses. Didn't expect to get that question. That's um, what you said? Yeah, kind of. And then I had to like, and then I was like, well, I would say if I had to pick a weakness for myself, if I had to give you one, right? Oh, God. I'd say maybe sometimes I lack discipline. <laughs> 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 and he was like, what do you mean you lack discipline? I was like, eh, there's Basically, times. Basically, I don't listen. <laughs> Basically, have you ever heard of E.L. Fudge cookies? Well, <laughs> let me tell you something. The other night, I ate two whole boxes. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I said I was going to have two cookies, and I ate the entire box. And then I went back to the store and ate another box. You did? No, I'm just saying. That's what I said at the interview. Oh. oh. Can you, like... No, because why don't the you, other why don't day... You, why don't you know when, we're, when I'm doing a bit? The other day, you yes. got cookies... You told me that you left like them in ago. the car. Yeah. I waited for those cookies, yeah. and then you said you accidentally ate them all. And you I hid believe potato it was chips from me. Because you lack discipline. You admitted. This was five <laughs> years ago. <laughs> it is current. <laughs> no. Yeah, so that question when people are like, so what's your... Yeah, what's your uh, weakness? What's your weakness? I yeah. was, I'm just like, you know what? I'm just too dedicated. Like, I just work yeah. too hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... um. I have great focus and stamina. Sometimes I work like an 80-year-old Chinese man. (laughs) I never... The only time I take breaks is to smoke on top of a box. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, but then other times your mic too many breaks were seen. Yeah. Yeah, like you break. You're like, oh, I I did 10 steps. Break. (laughs) I do take a lot of breaks. (laughs) And I and I fe- I feel like I am owed a thank you every ten minutes for uh yeah whatever task I'm doing. Now here's the thing: I know it's not good to stereotype. We shouldn't we shouldn't generalize racially. Mm-hmm. But is it okay to say something positive about groups of people? If you go, oh, gay guys are good at this, so Chinese people are good at this, Indians are you know? Um, I just like think you, that you like there's to... so many other things to talk about no, that it's course. weird. You want to isolate one group I of don't, people and talk saying, about them. Well, like, that's what's on my mind. Okay, yeah. So that's something like you should think about. I mean, you should you should examine that about yourself. 
I just feel like it's okay to talk about <laughs> culture, other cultures. Okay, yeah, you but know? it's all yeah certain values, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, but Somebody there's other things this. like I have a whole list of things I wanted to talk about, and it's not there's you do? no today? today. Yeah, okay. There's no race or culture on it, really. Um, there's no race or culture on my list either. It just came <laughs> out of me organically. <laughs> no, but it came out of me organically, Deborah. Um, I wanted to talk about cake. Okay, go. So listen, uh, if you're just tuning in, this is the Sit Down with Mike Racine. This <laughs> podcast did start off as an organized crime podcast. Uh, I am doing a show on Patreon every day. I stopped, so I do a lot. There, I'm putting out a lot more content. So it's kind of nice because I put a show out every day that's 20 to 30 minutes. Yeah. What the fuck was that? Um, that's 20 to 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. And then Tuesday rolls around when I have to put out the regular show and I go, ah, damn it. Right. You fuck. forget that that Son show exists. I, but have here re- it is. I have to read, I have to research. So here it is. Yeah. But this, you know, this episode will be about the, the coronavirus, which as we all know is a biological, uh, weapon. Oh, okay. So I'm that's, not that's really, like, that's yeah. organized crime. I wasn't thinking that, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I could talk. We about will it. talk about organized crime a little bit, but I just sure. do feel like. Do people for the time, revolt for the time being, if you don't talk about no, some but type they do of like crime? It. They do like it. People write in and they go, hey, Mike, I know you're thinking about dropping the theme, but I do like hearing about the mafia and whatever. And whatever. Okay. So we can bring them into it at some point. We can bring them into it. Yeah. They'll yeah. get involved. Anyway, okay. cake. They love cake. cake. In the mafia. In the mafia? No, they don't. Yeah, they do. It's like, you know, dessert. Mm -hmm. It's an important part of the meal. Did you ever see Inglorious Bastards? Uh, Yeah. There's a scene where, like, he eats of... I forget the significance of it. Maybe I don't remember if I saw that. But there's a scene where the Nazi colonel, like, eats Mm -hmm. a a, a strudel with whipped cream. Uh Uh-huh. And I forget... What the importance of is? But you I was just, just I was watching. Strudel. Yeah, I was so watching. Dessert, binging, I was yeah. watching binging with Babish the other night. Uh huh. You're doing he, a lot while I go to he sleep. He made. I do a lot while you go to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I was watching binging with Babish, and uh, he um he was making this uh he was making the strudel from Inglorious Bastards. Uh huh. What so is I a forget. strudel? It's what? like a German. Wait, let me look it up. What's, what color is it? Is it like well, white it's like and fruit. pale? Well, ap- apple strudel. Oh, like the little pie with the fruit on top. Yeah. Okay. I think strudel. So it's like a a strudel is a type of layered pastry with a filling that is usually sweet. Mm-hmm. It became popular in the 18th century throughout the Habs. The Habsburg Empire strudel is part of an Austrian cuisine, but also common in other Central European cuisines. It's like a, um, it's like an enchilada, but with but sweet. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. I remember one time me and my family were at the Olive Garden, mm-hmm. and the, there was this like waiter who was like, we were what we were watching him because he was, we were watching him most of the night because he wasn't a very good waiter. Yeah, you guys. <laughs> yeah, we're cunts. What do you want? <laughs> yeah, me and my family are a bunch of cunts. Like, you don't even want to talk to each other. You want to make fun of somebody else. <laughs> well, my grandmother ran a restaurant for like 30 years. Oh, so, so you went out to be like, nobody knows how to run restaurants like us. Yes. So when like, she went, yes. So she, old when men she, who were playing when football she in went high to, school. When she went to Buffalo Wild Wings, <laughs> she'd be like, this is not right. I need fresh coffee and I need, uh, you know, a clean napkin. Yeah. I anyway. Mean, this guy is like on the. Uh, this guy is uh, telling the table what pasta vazul is. Yeah. And we have pasta. We would eat pasta vazul like every other week. Right. You know. You're well versed. Meanwhile, yeah. these other peasants at this why, restaurant but, okay, with but, you don't okay, even know what like, pasta vazul is. Why do you make me feel like I'm? <laughs> l- I'm like. Why do you make me feel like I'm Princess Jasmine? <laughs> You're always ribbing me. <laughs> You know what's funny about the movie Aladdin? They Is show this about cake. Shut up! Hold on a second. <laughs> they show they show when Aladdin like falls in love with Jasmine, but they don't show the part where like they're living together and he's like shitting on the floor. And she's like, "What are you doing? There's a toilet in here." Like he can't because he lives on the street. I mean, I she's think like Aladdin she's the princess who fell in love with a homeless guy. Toilet. Let he, me finish a th- please. Okay. Let me finish a thought. Well, all right, I'll try not to have any in between. Go, I'm sorry. Go ahead, <laughs> Go ahead honey. <laughs> no, but like. Aladdin wasn't a street rat. What do you he, mean? He gained access to any place he wanted to go. He probably just like used other people's bathrooms. Yeah, but just he's hopped hom- into those windows yeah, with no... But he's homeless. So he's going to have some he, homeless tendencies after that relationship that he's going to have to shake. Or, mm-hmm. they're, I mean, they're going to annoy each other. Right. You know? I would, how come She's going to be like, Aladdin, come to bed. And he's going to like just lay on the floor, <laughs> on the hard floor. You know what? I think I like it down here, actually. Right. Abu, can you shit on my chest so it feels like <laughs> home? 
How yeah. come when I started watching Return of Jafar, I never saw any sight What of... a piece of shit that movie I was. I know. It, you turned it off and I was glad, but Ooh. so why did I not get a glimpse of Jasmine and Aladdin and their married married life? I don't even want to dignify that movie. With... Nobody even wants to know about married life. Who? In Disney movies. I guess not. Yeah. No, there's no like Cinderella ever... 2, Little Mermaid 2. It's like, nah. The best already happened. Yeah. <laughs> It's all about like finding the prince. Yeah. And then um the rest of your life you're like, "Uh, did and then you they make don't that show, smell?" Like, yeah, when he gets fat. God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It stinks in here. <laughs> Everything and you're like it stinks. wasn't and I'm like it wasn't me and I'm lying to you. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so cake. We had cake uh-huh. day on Sunday. Yeah. And I made four cakes. I'm glad we're not talking about Return of Jafar, by the way. Oh, it yeah. It was a real, just a real piece of trash. Yeah, the opening song is like, is it Gilbert Godfrey or they got someone else to screech? Uh, that was Gilbert Godfrey, yeah. All right, so it's Iago singing. But, and like, why would you lead with that? And also, it's Aladdin, and he's like foiling a group of thieves in, in the beginning. Right, so why was he doing that? Does I don't he know. Does he just need to like get back I, on, I the, guess, on the street for I some guess. adrenaline? I guess. He's like a cop or something now? I don't know. I don't know. You but would think he's got it, it made. He can just play video games all day while right. Princess Jasmine governs. Or like have a tiger. I mean, come on. He can just be her fuck boy. <laughs> he can be her Stedman. <laughs> <laughs> right. Aladdin is Stedman. <laughs> <laughs> Oprah's Oprah's husband. Yeah. So I made four cakes. I failed one cake. Uh-huh. And then I realized what I did wrong with the cake. Wait, you made four cakes? Yeah, I one failed. Oh, so those there cake was only balls don't count. I told you one failed. Did mm-hmm. you not hear that? <laughs> no, Four cakes, they, one failed. Go, okay, go ahead. Okay, so there were three cakes. There was the vanilla one, the chocolate one, and the strawberry one. Yeah. I stacked the chocolate and strawberry, but they were still two different So that cakes. counts as two cakes? My point is that I made two cakes. You made three cakes. cakes. You made three cakes. Okay, so All right, go ahead. I made the... <laughs> yeah. God, you're crazy. Go ahead. I should have split that in half instead of putting like two giant cakes on top of each other when you see the layered t- cakes it's like thinner sure. layers okay so it should have been half the cake recipe yeah and then like cakes don't come out perfectly round people of course cut not. them of course they cut out so that it's a shape of course yeah and i was like what is this i was supposed to i it was like a pinterest fail yeah i can i just fill the listeners in on so your cake different. though yeah. <laughs> Deborah all weekend, she was like, I want to make you cake on Sunday. So finally, Sunday <laughs> rolls around. It's cake day. I wake up. I smell cake. I was like, are those pancakes? And I was like, no, cake, regular cake. Yeah. I'm going to have regular cake for breakfast. <laughs> like an 11-year-old boy who, yeah, just, cake who, just, who just locked his parents in the basement <laughs> and took control. Like yeah. an 11-year-old boy who just killed his parents. Mm-hmm. That was a funny SNL sketch with Chance the Rapper. Uh, He's listing all the snacks that he has oh, in yeah, his yeah, house. Yeah, and they, yeah, yeah. And then they, they realize, realize he killed his parents. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. Yeah. Anyway, cake day. You're filling everyone in on cake day. So you anyway, so I wake up. Cake. So I wake up, and I think that I see a a yellow cake and an orange cake. Right. What there wasn't. There was a yellow cake. I, that one failed. Okay. So it was there. I thought it was like I thought it was yellow frosting. No. No, it wasn't. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Mike thought I made him a Burton Ernie cake. I did not make him a Burton Ernie cake. If you want to hear more about that story, head over to Patreon. Head over to Patreon, folks. Give me money, and I'll talk about <laughs> Burton Ernie. But basically, I pictured. <laughs> I talk about all the baby shows on our Patreon: <laughs> Barney, uh, Blanky Bop, um, Teletubbies, one? Gerbert. Fraggle Rock was a, a, a not a baby show. Right. Yeah. Zoobly Zoo. <laughs> so get get on over there. I'll rev- I'm going to review all the Nick Junior shows. Right to me, stick stickly, P.O. Box nine. That wasn't Nick Jr. It New was York regular City, Nickelodeon. New York State, one oh one oh eight. Anyway, go ahead about your cake. <laughs> um, yeah. So it should have been made in thinner <laughs> layers, and then manipulated. Like cakes are really manipulated to look the way that they are. Of course. Yeah. I don't know. That didn't really occur to me. It's like you know, it's already in a round tin, therefore it will be round. No. Mm-hmm. I think no, a lot all of cake of gets discarded. Shit. Oh, absolutely. In the process of oh, making cakes. Absolutely. Yeah. There should be an app for that where it's like uh-huh. you can take discarded bits of well, cake. Well, there's an episode of Seinfeld. You're n- people don't like it. Yeah. They they want the whole thing. Yeah. No one wants to be like leftover cake. For it. Well, no one wants the muffin bottoms. Right. Yeah. And that is essentially the texture of cake. Yeah. You know what else gets discarded a lot is pasta because you're, you're making and cutting pasta. 
and you want the stuff to, if you're doing it professionally you want it to be even uh, so unless you're you know using it to make pasta vizool right I never finished my pasta yeah an sword, italian okay. delicacy so let's see so the peasants at olive garden didn't know what don't worry about it don't worry about pasta it don't worry, don't worry about you it you were making fun of the shitty don't waiter worry about it. what happened with the cake was there cake it in the doesn't story matter. you'd stop <laughs> portraying my family like this I can't help who I, who I come from, Deborah. <laughs> and who you've become. Yeah. Bum, bum, bum. It's like usually the movie is like the, the person is embarrassed that they're of their family because their family's poor. Mm -hmm. But with me, I'm embarrassed that my family's like, like middle, upper middle class. Rich, yeah. I'm not. We're not rich. Uh -huh. We're yeah, not. I know. We're not. I don't believe you. And also, I was a fat kid, so I suffered in my own way. <laughs> <laughs> my childhood had a lot of trauma attached to it. Yeah, you also talk about a lot of embarrassing things happening with you and your family in restaurants. I do? Yeah. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can't be in public. How are you, you, weren't, you weren't in public enough, though, it feels like. I guess you guys always ate at home because you thought that you guys were better yeah. than restaurants. Uh, I don't want to say better, but but, <laughs> but you have, said you, you said the, the, that I cook you better your, than most you restaurants. You do, but could you get all of your, the receipts in one restaurant? Who were like, this is great. We all like it here. <laughs> Everything is delicious. Yes, you could in Italy. Oh, you did. We had some great meals in Italy. Okay, yeah, That's good. Me, my sister, my brother, my dad, the pickiest members of my family. Actually, maybe Alex is the pickiest. I yeah, don't know. Alex, because he only wants certain stuff. Because he can only have, yeah. Yeah. French fries and chicken nuggets. He likes Elio's. Yeah. Anyway, the other, so do you want to talk about um, something else? Um, you want to talk about Stockholm Syndrome? Wait, but what about cake, though? Is it even? Oh, yeah. Cake? I was just, so then I was, yeah, I was watching This Is Us, and they, like, she dished out this really fancy cake, and it, it was kind of what I envisioned for my cake, mm -hmm. and hers just was so much better, but then I realized, like, that cake. Oh, yeah, but they're absolutely. Was yeah. all hacked at and stuff, yeah. Yeah, but see, now you, now you know. First of all, that cake was excellent. It, I mean, I, I'm not blowing smoke. <laughs> you made a blueberry reduction and ma yes. made, made a frosting out of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was fantastic. I couldn't Thank stop you. eating. Thank you. But it visually, yeah, visually did not hit the mark. I don't, but I don't care. <laughs> it was so tasty, I don't care. But, yeah, I guess in the future, because my mom would always do that. Like, she would make, she would make cake where it was like th four inch thick, um, well, let's see. My my penis is three, so oh. yeah, about four inch, <laughs> about four inch thick cake, and then a thin layer of icing. And I would be like, "Who who is eating this? That means I, a, well, you, every bite, every third bite is just a cake and no some frosting." Some people don't like frosting. I don't like that. Who doesn't like frosting? Me, I don't like frosting. That's bizarre. And that that cake, I'm actually quite impressed with. You liked the cake that I didn't like, that yeah. I was very disappointed in, and I liked the cake that I thought. That you would like more. Yeah. Well, yeah. pie is way better. Pie is good. So you're just, you are you don't even care about cake day that I made for cake. No, I did. It was nice. <laughs> but people, a, a, a few years ago, someone said to me, like, pie is infinitely better than cake. And I was like, eh. And I wanted to, like, argue with them. And I wanted to be like, mm -hmm. no, I don't think so. But after having made a pie. Yeah. And making the crust and everything. Mm -hmm. Pie is like more difficult. It's a little more difficult. It takes a little more, you know, finesse. Yeah. Um, so I think it is better. Yeah. I don't want to live in a world where I have to decide what's Between better. Cake and pie. Yeah. I'm just fine understanding they're both quite nice. Yeah. Yeah. And you should try that no. when, like, every scenario, instead of ranking everything, Why? you can just be like, wow. Just appreciate everything for what it is. <laughs> yeah. I guess, honey. Do you want to talk about Stockholm Syndrome or these coupons, or did you want to talk about the coronavirus? Um, let's go to one of my topics. So one okay. thing that I want to talk about is I want to talk about leaders. Okay. Yeah. I want to talk about the leaders that we have who are handling this crisis. Mm -hmm. You had a you had a thing that you were playing the other day. It was like a conference with the governors on the East Coast. It was like yes. Cuomo and then Phil Murphy mm -hmm. and then and then Delaware's had no questions. Uh huh. <laughs> hey, how you doing? It's me, Bob. <laughs> It's me, Bob no Delaware. Questions. The okay. governor of Delaware is just his name is Bob Delaware. Yeah. And uh it you just get it just goes it's like a monarchy. Right, yeah. The governorship of Delaware. Mm -hmm. Um anyway, but I was thinking about, you know, the way different leaders are handling this crisis. 
Yes. I think President Trump is doing a fantastic job, and every time I see him on TV, I weep. I put on my MAGA hat, and I weep for how yeah. great he's doing. Um, it but, seems so strange how, like, highly divided people have been. Like, I... People I know who do like Trump uh -huh. are maintaining that he is doing and has done well. Uh -huh. um, and then there's just like this vapid like hatred for him that I see in other like mostly on Facebook. But it's just so odd, like how highly split everyone is and how like passionate everyone seems to be well at least people who talk about it yeah um like there are no like oh i think trump's pretty good i'd vote for him again yeah no <laughs> one is like no yeah you, you no one is on the fence about him yeah there's a pretty strong line in the yes, sand of that's how people what feel. i feel like yeah yeah or but then maybe people are just not all talking you can't base everything on the ones who scream about things mm -hmm. so who knows really mm -hmm. but um Leaders, yeah. Yeah, and I just feel like... Oh, boy. I'm looking at a meme that's not very nice. Oh, uh, what do you think about leaders that you're trying to talk it's to? It's about, about Michelle leaders? Obama. Okay. <laughs> okay, anyway. I want to watch Freddie Got Fingered. Yeah? Yeah. I want to go get some cake. Right now? Yeah. All right, everybody, we're going to take a quick break while Deborah puts cake in her mouth, and uh, we'll That's be right. right back. Do you want to take a break? Yeah, well, I just want to get the cake. All right, why don't you yeah. get some, and I'll uh, I'll keep doing the show. Good. Okay. All right, Deborah's out of the room for a second, guys. It's uh, I would like to bring you to a segment called Mike's World. Mike's Opinions. Um, no, but I guess one thing I do want to talk about is I do want to talk about leadership during a crisis. And look, when you look at something like the entertainment business uh, and what's happening now, it's hard to really like put your finger on what's going on and quantify like what's happening and who's doing what and who's doing who's like successful, right? Um, Deborah showed me some TikTok videos the other night, and there's a lot of like, I mean, she showed me some really good content on TikTok. And uh, she showed me one video where these kids like put a screenshot where it it, it looked like they broke the TV, <laughs> and they like pretended they like slammed a ball on the floor, and they were like, "Oh no, what did you do?" And the dad comes downstairs and he sees like the the black the messed up screen on the TV and he goes, "What the fuck? That's a brand new fucking TV!" <laughs> and he starts, you know, he starts freaking out. Um, but I guess it's funny to think that, like, you know, there, there there was an era back in the day where there were stars of whatever. There were famous people. There were movie stars. Yes. You know? You would look at somebody like Cary Grant, and you go, oh, that's, like, the most handsome guy. They just, you know, Paul Newman. Uh, I know I'm only naming men, but, you know. Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe. Sophia, Sophia Loren. Audrey Hepburn. Something, there's, like, you know, these people got to be in movies. But now... People get to like sort of make their own thing. People get to do it and build followings and whatever and, you know, make money, make a living off entertaining people. Yeah, well, before it was but, like pop culture decided who got to be followed. Sure. Let me just finish this thought because I, I know you yeah. have a lot to say. <laughs> um, but but now you sort of see like more of a democratization of entertainment. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like. Why can't politics go back to being that? Why can't we just have like tribes in the woods? Why can't the streets, you know, like every block just govern each other? Just like it's um, caveman times. See, I had, would like, not prefer happen? that. No? Mm -mm. Okay. Yeah, but I think I could pro I could maybe be president of the block, of this block. I've Mike, seen who lives on this block. I think you struggle to be president of this, of yourself. Of my house? <laughs> not even. Like, yeah, you're <laughs> right. You're the president of... Uh, <laughs> Our apartment. I'm just the vice. I'm just the VP. <laughs> you are Shmi. Shmi. Who's Shmi. <laughs> Mr. Shmi. <laughs> yeah. I'm, Why did you I'm say Shmi? You're Hook. Captain Hook. That's what you. <laughs> that's what you think of when you see me, Mr. Shmi. Of all the Disney movies we watched this week, I'm not Pongo. I'm not the genie. I'm not Lumiere. I'm not the Beast. No, I can name you in every I'm movie. Not Gaston. 
Who are name? Who are the, who are my top three Disney characters? Wait, who I would say you exhibit? Yeah, the behaviors of. Yeah. Um. Because you are like. All Mulan. right, good. Let's do that. Well, you're probably like Mulan, mm-hmm. Lady from Lady and Tramp. Uh huh. And uh, King Louie from Jungle Book. I don't know much about King Louie. And uh, the elephant from Jungle Book. Why? Because I'm fat. <laughs> Was that a cheap joke? <laughs> yeah, you're dumb. Right. You're such a hack. I know, I am. <laughs> That's the other thing I want to talk about, too. People are people are like losing their minds, and they're also losing their sense of humor. I'm looking at comics, just like post some really hacky stuff. Because I think it's been so long since we've been around other comedians that everybody's kind of like getting real, real, real dull. And I also it, it it's also funny seeing people like go crazy on social media because I saw this post. So somebody sent me this tweet last night and some girl was like, you know, um, I. A comic once fingered me while he was uh, dating his current fiance, and if this thing loses, you know, if this thing makes me go crazy, are you confessing to something right well, now? Well, everyone, I'm the only en- engaged comic that I know. <laughs> I mean, everyone's going to think girl. that's I just I never touched her, never even <laughs> spoken to her. Why person. do you assume things are about you? Because I'm the only comic. Who's another comic who's engaged? That's I why I know. asked you. That's why I asked you last night. I know. That's I why know. I woke you up and I said, who's a comic who's engaged? <laughs> Tell me right now. Remember that time you fingered a girl and she was sick and then you got Why do you cold? always bring that up? <laughs> why do you always bring that up? Because you don't, you think you can get a cold from fingering. You absolutely you can. <laughs> no. Oh my God. <laughs> Like, maybe if you kissed her or if she breathed on you. See, this is the problem with you. Here's the problem with you. <laughs> and I'm going to give you I'm gonna give you a little compliment sandwich here, right? Where I'm going to give you a positive about you, okay. a negative about you, mm-hmm. and then another positive. <laughs> okay, let's go. Here's the first positive about you. Uh-huh. You're brilliant. Thank you. You're very smart. <laughs> you do anything you set your mind to. Mm-hmm. The other side of that coin <laughs> is that you refuse to learn anything. <laughs> So you won't accept that, yes, you can get a cold from fingering a bitch. <laughs> yes. Oh, not from, not, from the, not from the act of fingering. Yes. <laughs> if you finger a girl, then you touch your face. You absolutely <laughs> can. So that's different. What? That's different. You touch your face, that part. Yeah. I don't know. I don't even think that. I don't know. Deborah, how is that so hard to comprehend? <laughs> Why are you touching your face? No, but I'm just saying, if you have a cut on your hand or something, or there's an opening on your finger, then the common cold. Also, will you're just breathing happen. on each other. Mm-hmm. All right, fine, I, <laughs> fine, Deborah. I never fingered a girl in my life. <laughs> Isn't that so grimy though that she said that? This is really That's weird. So that fucking this is a dirty whole stunt that you're just trying to let everyone know, like you haven't potentially did finger somebody. <laughs> like you just wanna. No, I just there. no. It just made me nervous because I was I was like I literally can't think of another comic who's engaged. Did you ever hook up with her? Never. So then, what is the drama? What are you, everyone's immaculate Mary? <laughs> what everyone's you? gonna think it's me. No, no one is thinking about you. Yes, they are. No, Andy's engaged. No, it's not Andy though. He is engaged though. Well, so you're not the it's, only there's engaged There's no way. Comic. There's no way it's Andy. Nemesh is engaged. Oh, Nemesh is engaged. It's not Nemesh. It's not Nemesh. No way. But two other people are engaged. So once again, you're not the only one. Okay. And All right, everybody. Know, let's play are, a little game. There are comedians in other places. Mm-hmm. Did you know that? But she said, like, I'll let you know who it is, implying that it's, like, somebody, you know, big. Oh, you're the I biggest just guy so stupid. It's right just now. so stupid when it's just so stupid when they like they they say that like like you're like it was the guy that did it. That's the fuck. That's the grimy one. It's not you for for hooking up with a, a guy who's in a relationship. You're you're totally cl- you're innocent. You're totally clear of right. any, you know, of any wrongdoings. I mean, well, it's a mutual choice. Everyone acted the way they did. I mean, yeah, but I women thinking, ain't like, shit. It'd be weird if um, because you and Leah were alone like twice when um. 
when she came over. Yeah. And I we was were? like, it would be so weird if like I walked Deborah had out. a friend over, everybody. We were six feet apart. Uh-huh. I knew. Hi, this is Bill de Blasio. Thank <laughs> you for snitching on your significant other. Yeah, nothing is sacred with you. But um, yeah. Actually, so you're, like, you're, you're probably the biggest tattletale that I know. I don't think that's accurate. Okay. But, yeah, like, if I walked outside and you and Leah were, like, making out, I'd have to be like, oh, did you guys just really want to do that? Because that was, like, really quick. And you feeling that passionate? I don't know. I don't couldn't get... My feelings weren't going anywhere strong in terms of anger. Mm-hmm. It'd be weird if, like, somebody hooked up with somebody else that quickly. Like, they must really want to do that. Yeah. So it's like, is that what you no, want to do? No, but she said while he was dating his current. Right. But then also, what it does even engaged mean? Like, maybe it's just somebody in a s- serious relationship. No. No? Okay. No. I don't know. All right. Anyway. Anyway. Let's move on. Leaders, you were trying to, did you get to a point there? Well, it just I just feel like you look at different leaders. Um, you know, you look at different leaders and how they're handling this crisis and it's just like, I don't know. Do we need, do we need leaders? I think that we, I think the healthiest thing for us to do right now Uh is to live in a society, to live in a, a sort of a savage utopia Mm -hmm. where nobody trusts anybody. Yeah. Where there's no trust, where we all just kind of like, you know, live off the land, stockpile weapons, stockpile food. You can help. You can give stuff to other people if you want, but there shouldn't be any type of. It 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 yeah, should be. We I should, would rather we should live not in a libertarian paradise where it should be every man for himself. I don't want to do that. No. No. All right. Um. Fine. It is funny though to watch people just become hacks, though. Mm-hmm. You know. I thought we were. In, let's talk about Stockholm syndrome. Okay. What was your review of Beauty? Let's and the talk Beast? about the organized crime of the ki- the Beast kitchen staff helping him <laughs> kidnap that young girl <laughs> and that old man. <laughs> they did organize. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess I didn't like that movie that much. I thought. I mean, after watching Aladdin, I thought Aladdin was way better. Now I understand the probably the technology is more advanced the following year, mm-hmm. um, but I just didn't. It was just a, it's just a weird. I remember really liking it as a kid, but it's just a weird premise to get on board with. Is that like this guy kidnaps this woman and then she falls in love with him? I mean, like right. you hear feminists complain about it, and it's kind of hard because feminists are always complaining. Uh huh. So it's like you go like when they go, you know, beauty and a beauty, and you go, what, what now? Right. What do you want? Yeah, all the. Can well, you I mean, shut up. All the stories. Please, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> yeah, all right. Whatever you say. Damn it, Emily. You know. Yeah, you know, coming from a white one, man. On this one, they're right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I guess so. Yes, and I just think that you know you mentioned hack or whatever. It's like, mm-hmm. duh. We know, like that's old news that. Beauty and the Beast is about Stockholm Syndrome. Like, that is not a new yeah. perspective or viewpoint on it. What is Stockholm Syndrome for those of you? I mean, I know what it it's is. Maybe some of our listeners don't know. fall in love with know. their captor. They become, like, brainwashed and dependent on this person. They, right. like, build them up and then knock them down. Right. Um, provide them, like... Is it kind of like... Does it happen to everybody who gets kidnapped? Or... Um, no, it's never safe to overgeneralize, but it yeah. is common when it's like, common. so I mean, well, cause I guess if, you, if the, you're dependent on someone for your, to have your needs met, it makes sense. Yeah. And then also in the initial, um, sequence, she's talking about the town is so boring and she wants adventure mm-hmm. and she likes to read books because she is searching. It's for like that. she wants to be thrown in a dungeon. I mean, I would say that might have <laughs> led to her circumstances mm-hmm. um, because she was not happy with her current surroundings. Yeah. Um, and then she was intrigued by the fact that it was an enchanted castle. Yeah. Um, and she also wanted to get away from Gaston. Yeah. She didn't want to be his little wife. Yeah. Anyway, so... But what <laughs> bums me out is like... 
you know, Lumiere and Cogsworth and Mrs. Potts. By the way, M- Mrs. Potts was what? Like his his butler or something? Because Cogsworth. The but then what was Cogsworth? He was the butler. But I think Cogsworth had a higher position. I think he was like the manager yeah. of the house. Mm-hmm. Maybe Lumiere was the butler. Yeah, maybe. I don't but know. That I didn't come from a family that has all these servants. Oh, right, right, so right. Yeah, I yeah, don't yeah. really I know. Yeah. Um, you know. Yeah, my dad used to make me watch him fire them to make me strong. <laughs> <laughs> Be like, come here, Michael. I want to show you something. This is <laughs> You really like Loretta, don't you? <laughs> All right. Loretta, can you come in here? Loretta, I'm sorry. We have we have to let you go. <laughs> and she's like, oh, no. And I'm like, I'm not sad. Are you crying, boy? Stop Stop. Uh, stop your belly aching. Right. She has to go. Um. But what I thought was interesting is like, what made the movie work, though, yeah, was that the none of the servants you don't see the servants pee and poop, right? Yeah, yeah. they never they never let anything out. Yeah, um, they were like character witnesses. They yeah. they were not afraid of him, and they did not like voice that they like they didn't pr- seem like prisoners. They just wanted to be humans again. They're like, yeah. oh, look at this tough circumstance. Right. <laughs> we just can't wait till the day we get turned back. Some of those fairy tales are so weird because it's like, it's not, it, like it just shows you how, I guess how low they think of st- built like kitchen staff because uh-huh. what did he have at his place? He had Cogsworth, he had Lumiere, he had the, the, the wardrobe, he had Mrs. Potts and he had the cook, right? The, 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 um, the, ch- the chef guy. Right. Yeah. So, like, why do they have to suffer? And Chip. Why do they have to suffer? Right. But, yeah, they seemed to be, like, you know, they got on with it. They always had each other. I don't know. But why do I have to get turned into a fucking blender because this my boss is a jerk? Is that what you think you'd get turned into? Hmm, that's a good question. Mm-hmm. I guess I would probably be, like, a... Uh, like a food processor that you could never figure out how to work it. <laughs> it just makes a lot of noise. I'd be a blanket. You would? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just because you like being wrapped around yeah. other guys. <laughs> Only you, honey. Okay. You'd be a blanket? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what would I be? Probably a blender. Something that tears shit up. Uh-huh. <laughs> Something that makes a mess without a lid on it. <laughs> yeah. I would just be a toilet. And I'm like... Oh, master, um, you know, I'm just letting you know. <laughs> Do you think maybe you could start peeing in the shower instead of my mouth? <laughs> <laughs> that could be a. I, I think a comic had that joke, but they're like, yeah, there's no toilet in Beauty and the Beast. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's Ooh. so weird. It's weird watching movies like, with comedians. Do you have to it's shit like, right in my mouth. Do you yeah. have to always like think of your own story? Can't we just focus on this one? Um. Yeah. Sorry, honey. <laughs> It's like, I'm not interested in your hot take on, like, the bizarro Beauty and the Beast world or... Yeah. <laughs> like, Sometimes I think you might be just better off dating, like, <laughs> like some basic bro. <laughs> just, like, some guy with a man bun who, like, does jujitsu. Right. Or doesn't even do jujitsu, like, mm-hmm. goes to Equinox, oh. works in sales, works in finance. Yeah. I like Equinox. Yeah. Just a guy who, like, has money mm-hmm. and is dumb. Yeah. And uh Dumb and Rich, not bad. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, why didn't I do that? I don't know, but it's not too late. <laughs> Our wedding's canceled anyway, so now's your chance. <laughs> no, it's not canceled. Um Do you ever I mean, do you ever think about that though? Like like you know, we've been quarantined together, we see each other every day. I think we've been doing pretty well. Mm-hmm. We haven't had any big fights. Mm-hmm. Little little skirmishes here and there. Yeah. Phew. You know. Usually you start most of them. Yeah, because it's when I've decided I can't take you any longer and I'm right, about to right, explode. Right, right, right. <laughs> I'm like, right. I'm gonna fucking kill this guy. <laughs> <laughs> See, she is funny, everybody. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. You are. Um, that's why That's why I think we're, we're good for each other because we're strong enough to date each other. <laughs> I don't know. You're if strong, I'm strong enough, enough to date me. I'm strong enough to date you. But do you ever think that, like, you know, you're, you're with somebody for a long time. Do you ever think that you have certain qualities? By the way, do you remember those commercials where they would stick the straw in the orange? Yeah. 
and they would they would act like you could drink juice out of an orange if you stuck a straw in it. Yeah. I remember trying that when I was a kid and being so pissed oh. when I couldn't, I, the straw like wouldn't go You're in. like, this one's misleading. <laughs> Mom, <laughs> call the National Orange Farmers Association of America. Get them on the phone right now. I have a bone to pick with them. This is false advertising and not yeah. right. You're like Veruca from Willy Wonka. No, I'm not Veruca. I'm, I'm uh, who am I? I you are, um, you are... Dudley from Harry Potter. No, I'm not. 36, 36, but lost you, lost you. There's 37. No, I'm, f- I'm George Weasley. <laughs> no, you're I'm the funny Weasley. No, you're not. I'm Dumbledore. Uh, okay. Um. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. I oh, I already talked about this on the show, but talk about advertising. Like it used to drive me crazy. Every Wait, what time was I talking I'm about before the orange thing, though? I don't know. Okay. I can't follow you. Just that you're crazy. That was it. Like, you just, you're an interesting oh, person. Oh, what I was saying is that, like, maybe there's another partner out there that would appreciate a side of you that I don't appreciate. Not mm-hmm. that I don't appreciate you, but there could be somebody who's like, oh, my God, like, your your sweaters are amazing. Right, yeah. Something that I've never noticed about you, somebody else could notice that. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, I mean, with me, I think you peaked. Sure. But sometimes... Fine, whatever you say. <laughs> I think that... Whatever you say. <laughs> <laughs> um, Look at our perfect puppy. I know, Frankie's just perfect. He's just the most perfect creature that ever walked the planet. And then that other one, <laughs> Oliver's I know. just he's <laughs> trying to get the bone that's in that basket. He's trying to open a plastic bag with a bone in it. Yeah, and then you know what? It's the only thing that's oc- he's been going crazy because he knows it's in there. Yeah. So it's like whatever. Yeah. I hope you get exhausted searching for it. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, what else is going on? The president told people to drink bleach. Did he really, though? Or was he just like dumb and speaking incorrectly? And he's like saying, oh, like some sort of antibiotic that works like a disinfectant. So so there's right. So there's there's two particularly bad takes in all this. There's the one bad. So he Trump Trump is in a press conference and he goes, you know, uh, we're seeing the certain, the, you know, if maybe with disinfectant, if there's if that could be done through some sort of injection. So he's, he says, like, he basically says, like, let's inject bleach. Let's inject. I think that he means like he Lysol. wants to. He thinks that there's something that you can inject in you that would clean out your system, like yeah. how bleach cleans a counter. That's what he like meant. Yes. But the, at the same time, Deb, like he's also he's pretty stupid. Right, that's still a stupid thing to say, but that's what he meant. But he wasn't saying like I think it's stupid when people bleach. Yeah, Obviously, he wasn't saying right. let's drink bleach. Right. So there's two th- so I feel like with this whole thing there's two there's two type of bad takes, right? There's the one there's the Trump people who are like Oliver, Jesus God. There's the Trump people who are like who were like, uh, he d- wasn't he wasn't saying drink bleach. First of all, n- no. What's what's good is that nobody's like, hell yeah, I'm gonna drink bleach. Like like no one is that stupid. Most people aren't that stupid. They're like hell yeah, I love my president. I'm gonna go drink bleach. Right. But there's people who are going like, uh, yeah, I think I have enough common sense to know that the president wasn't telling us to dr- actually drink bleach or ingest Lysol. Right. Which and is he like, never even said that. But I feel like wouldn't you right. wait for direct orders before you drank bleach? Yeah, but even, like someone would have to be like, "You are supposed to drink bleach." Yeah, drink it now. But even the most hardcore Trump people are like, are that's what they're saying? They're like, "Yeah, he wasn't telling people to drink bleach." Yeah, you know, the other, the other, what I think is the dumber take is people actually freaking out and being like, "Oh my God, he's telling us to drink bleach!" Like, uh huh. I mean, I think most, I just like to think that most people, I feel like I don't have to worry, I shouldn't have to worry about anyone who's going to drink bleach because the president told them to. Now, a few people did call, like, the Maryland, you know, Medical Association or something and said, is it okay to drink bleach? So there are people who are doing that. Now, I don't feel like we we should just, like, not feel bad for, I just don't have time to care about 
I don't have time to care about that. Right. You yeah. Know? I mean, I sort of disregarded it. I think what I heard mostly were people like, do you believe this guy? Now he wants us to drink bleach. Like, yeah. I just think he's dumb and misspoke and he didn't even know what he was talking about and he yeah. described it incorrectly. Yeah, yeah. He like essentially thought that a vaccine is like like when you put a vaccine in you that like Mr. Clean comes out and goes through your body. Yeah. And just like gets rid of all the yucky stuff. Right. <laughs> like in the commercial. Right, right. That's what he like thought. Mm-hmm. Cause he's dumb. Sure. And I hate him too. I just also, yeah. like, I guess... You just hate the hysteria around... I hate the, the hysteria, and I hate, like... I, I, it's my own fault that I am friend, follow so many comedians, but, like, didn't like to see all the hacky jokes about it. Didn't like to see all of, like, the crazy yeah. Facebook group people talking about it. It was just annoying. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know what? I, like... I feel as though... A lot of stories kind of start this way, and it's like if the world's gonna burn, I might as well enjoy it while it lasts. I yeah, can't spend thing my days too is just like, yeah. Right, like the world has never really burned. You know, we've we've seen two world wars. Well, there's like Fahrenheit 451. That's like, a fictional story, though. But that could happen. I guess, yeah. Um, but yeah, we've never really seen. But World War Two killed like a hundred million people or something. Right, 50, but this 50 is like with those, the growth of technology and the spread of do you know who, Do you know which country had the most casualties in uh, World War II? You could probably guess. Germany? Uh, close. Uh, another big player. I don't know. Just tell me. Big country. Can you just say it? Russia. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, fine. Um, we should do an episode on Stalin, actually. I don't know much about Stalin, <gasps> and I think I would like to uh, delve into that. All right, that's a good idea. Yeah. Doesn't Colin have a Russian degree? He does. Or it's like Russian literature. Russian literature, yeah. 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 Anybody else that you know that's into Russian history? There's got to be somebody. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That would mm. be a fun little introduction to So Stalin. if you know a lot about Russian history, maybe reach out. That could be a good that could be a series like we'll do di- like dictators. Yeah, there you go. Colin an expert. Yeah. Somebody who knows a lot about them. So somebody who wants to talk a lot about them, then you can just like Yeah. Be funny. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um Okay, so uh Jesus Christ. Mike and I moved and I'm I sorry, did the we can hear that though, right? Thing and uh we got, we got all, all our coupons. coupons. So you wanna go through those? Yeah. There's Bed Bath and Beyond twenty percent off. Do you think we need that? We don't, our, our kitchen our kitchen is pretty good. We might need another we could we could get maybe like a mandolin. That'd be kind of cool to have like okay. a chop a mandolin and then maybe like one more um cutting board. What about for board. the bathroom? No, we're good on the bathroom. Okay. And what about beyond? No. Yeah, all right. Get him to Um All right. So while you're doing that, there is one more thing that I want to ask you, Deborah. And um I think that this is like something that I've I've been thinking about a lot because we were just talking about the president telling people to drink bleach. But you're an educator and you work with a lot of different types of kids and you work with kids at all different levels and you yeah. teach college too. So you see like, mm-hmm. you know, you're teaching people who are trying to go to grad school. So you see every level of, yes. you know, whatever. And I'm sure some, you see a lot of disparage, disparity in kids' abilities. Yes, right? the, there are different. To, some everyone has different strengths. Yeah, yeah. The thing with uh, the thing that I've been thinking about a, a lot, a, a lot about lately, is uh, is stupid people. Mm-hmm. And when you look at people, and you when you look at somebody, and you go, "Oh, that person's stupid," or "That person's you know a mark," or they're falling for whatever you know propaganda. Yeah, that's happening. Do you? It's easy to have contempt for people who are dumb. And it's easy to go, oh, you're, I hate, like, you know, like, I don't like you because you're, you're so dumb. Mm-hmm. But th- when you see someone who's, like, dumb, do you have compassion for them? Or because isn't everybody just kind of like a victim of their, uh, you know, their surroundings? And their um, No, I mean, like, I, I don't equate, like, dumbness with, uh, like, ability 
and mm-hmm. stuff. Like, um, when I think like, oh, that person's so dumb, it's like, oh, I don't agree with them or, yeah. um, and so, no, I don't really have compassion in that sense because I don't agree with them. Like, I don't either like their point of view or I don't like their behavioral choices. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know you always say I lack sympathy. And, but, you know, you are a very, like, you're like, a, you flip really easy. Like, you are so pissed at people and then you're like, oh, you know, he's maybe he had a bad day. <laughs> like, you get pissed at someone and then you apologize i get real for pissed them. and then i try to put myself in their shoes yeah yeah y- yeah you're really your fuse is short and then it grows again but then yeah. it, but it, but it still comes back as a short fuse yeah 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 um do you just like that about yourself or you want to work on it ever i don't know honey <laughs> all right last thing and then we'll wrap it up uh some more pretty credible evidence has come out against uh presumptive vice presidential nominee joe biden mm-hmm. um so before there was this woman accused Using him, like I said a couple weeks ago, I listened to her on a podcast. It was very detailed, uh, you know her her allegation. People are saying, "Oh, why didn't she try? Why didn't she try to come forward back then?" She's been trying to come forward since the early '90s with this story. Nobody would listen to her or take it. Mm-hmm. They're like, "Why is it coming out now?" People people actually think that well, okay. hold on a sexual assault yeah. allegation just you just put it out there and then it catches on like. Any, you could say that any powerful person, it's you against them and everything that they have behind and all the all the power that they have behind them. Right. So like if, if, if Barack, if Michelle Obama like molested me yeah. that time that she came to the open mic or whatever, you know, like mm-hmm. grab my ass. Right. Do you honest like do you honestly think I could say that and it, it could catch fire and it could go somewhere? People act like there's just a direct line to the press with these things. Right. Um, also, though, why not say something now? If somebody was inappropriate to me in my past, like maybe it was just in my best interest and perspective to just move on. Right. Yeah. But if that person then decided to become the president, I could be like, oh, I'm wondering if he'd be good at that because like this thing that I'm over. Yeah. <laughs> did happen a while ago. Yeah, yeah. And I might not be the only one. Yeah. So just thought I'd let you know. Yeah. And uh, you can do what you want with that information. But yeah. But like looking back, I might think like, oh, I don't really care what that person's doing currently. I don't need to speak out about. Right. Yeah, so why not now, even if right. that is the case? The thing is, I mean, I, I think part of the problem is that Bernie Sanders came in second place. Mm-hmm. So, and I'll, I'll, I'll admit that, second place, you know? Yeah. Okay, second, because all the, all the dirty tricks that you played, mm-hmm. he came in second place. But he came in second place. Mm-hmm. So I feel like if he didn't, if he came in like, you know, third or fourth, mm-hmm. it would be easier for them to be like, all right, well, let's get him out of here and just, this is, this is too much. Let's pick somebody else. You're mm-hmm. fucking senile anyway, so we'll just go with the next person. Right. But because the next person down the down the trough is Bernie Sanders, they're gonna they're gonna fight so hard. Mm-hmm. They don't have somebody else they can put in. Right. And um, they're gonna just run him. They're gonna just run a senile rapist, and it's so fucking depressing. Right. But you know what? I have this theory that um, politics is like WWE wrestling. Uh Like there's the storyline and that's what we know. And then it's like they go home and they have their own like real life and perspectives and stuff. Like I don't think that we get told that like we get the information that we are exposed to is like. Yeah, we don't see them day to day, but this is who they are. I'm just. What do you mean? It's like WWE. like, I think that they're characters. I think politicians are characters and they want like to be in this spotlight and to have this power and to maintain this position and they want to stay there and they don't want to lose their spot. So they'll play the heel or they'll play the good guy or they'll win a match or lose a match as long as they maintain their position in like so it's politics. Theater. It's theater. Yeah, so I don't think the Democrats ever want to win. I don't think they try to win. I mm-hmm. think that they just like having like their big giant houses in New Hampshire with mm-hmm. like double refrigerator doors. Yeah, and um, they like Trump's tax cuts probably. So yeah, so they just pretend that they want to win so that they can keep their stuff. Mm-hmm. But really, 
they want things to stay the way that they are. Yeah. Because they're all quite comfortable. Yeah. And that's what I think. Yeah. And as they'll play whatever role will keep them there. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Bernie was not going to like maintain that status quo. And, uh, but it's just DC. crazy if he had like, if he, you know, just because like they're so, they're so corrupt. Mm -hmm. There's such corrupt pieces of shit that they're gonna, they're gonna do this and they don't care. And it's fu it's absolutely insane. Right. And but it's then just also like their whole like thing is, has been like, well, you have to. I mean, you have to do it. You have to vote for us because what's your other choice? And it's like so. But, and then the other thing that people bring up is they go, oh, well, what about the Supreme Court? Because they're like, oh, well, Biden will appoint the next Supreme Court justice. OK, but what you're basically what and 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 they go, oh, well, well reproductive rights, women's reproductive. It's too important. Because they're going to overturn Roe v. Wade, potentially, if Trump has another four years and gets to put another Supreme Court justice on the court. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, so now what you're doing is you're telling women, you're telling women that, like, you basically, you're treating them like a, like an indentured, like, not a slave, but like an indentured servant. Because you're telling women, okay, well, you know, if you don't vote for this rapist, you're not going to have your abortions. And I just think, I can't imagine, I can't fathom anyone doing that and 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 that working and them winning. I think they're going to be punished like God punished them in 2016. Mhm. Mm you know what I mean? Like th but that I think that's you're not when is that that's never worked. Has that ever worked? Has that ever worked where mm -hmm. you where you hold someone captive like they're a fucking and I think a lot of people like people of color feel the same way where they feel like they're obligate they, they the democrats do feel like they're obligate they're they're owed they're entitled to their vote. And it makes that's what makes a lot of uh, people of color sit out for elections. Right. I mean, you're not a woman or a person of color. But I, I feel like one sometimes. I, yeah, I know. You, yeah, you're spiritually. My spirit is one. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I don't think you're thinking about, like, I think that you sit around thinking about this shit too much because you don't know. So you're just filling your brain with other people's I don't know speculations. What. Anything. It's all fake. They put out the information that they want you to know and believe. They watch you scramble while they put out stories. It's just like, it, and then you fall for it. The thing is that Trump is so going to be like the next whole other president thing again. Happen. You think, but you think there's a whole yes. other thing happening behind the scenes? A hundred thousand percent. I guess there and is, but there that doesn't mean that, that doesn't that mean that what we're seeing that or anyone can do. You sound to like stop a flat it. earther right now, though. That doesn't mean that mm -hmm. what you're seeing isn't real and it's not happening. And it's like a, 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 there's a team of writers. Yeah, there's it's, there, there's not a team there's of writers. There's a team of writers. There's definitely a that's team crazy. Of <laughs> oh well, they're God. writing speeches and they're leaking stories, but they're not but writing. It's not the, like they're the not writing. writing the narrative. Okay, it's a metaphor, dumbass. Yeah, but that's happening it organically. <laughs> no, I think that's a terrible analogy. It is. It is what is happening. Yeah, that's what I'm going to call this. Politics is the WWE with Deborah Brooks. Yeah, it is. And right. um, you can't know everything that you think you know. It's like you just you're thinking you're a psychic and you're not. I understand what you're saying, but I also have a hard time believing that there's like this secret society that's controlling everything. I think that the world is a lot more random and fragmented that, that, than we think. I think that there's a lot. I think less is rigged than we like to believe. Less is fixed and less is rigged than we like to believe. You don't and think I that think everyone's that influenced by lobbyists and like some sort of corporation yes, that's backing yes, every yes, single person. But all those people that's manipulating all of their voting and that they would maintain. But those people, they don't control. They don't control you don't the think system. These people have gambling habits or like prostitute. Um, stories that people are blackmailing them yes, with I'm if they sure. don't no, vote what, this that's way. That's what Jeffrey Epstein did. That's okay. So that is what I'm saying. Like, okay, but what I'm saying is like, okay, but what I'm saying is this dark uh, society that you're imagining. They don't have as much. <clears throat> they have. They might have a lot of power and influence, but they're trying just as hard as we are to get their stuff passed because they they have. There's more people behind. You know, more more people. Are are not fucking kids with Jeffrey Epstein than are so all those people who are feel like they're in a vulnerable position because they don't have there's not as there's not as many of them right so it's right, not but like other people might so have they other don't so the point is interests. they don't control they don't control as much as you would think right but everybody has some sort of like 
motive. You know, like if everybody has like something that they're that's their why, like that what they're doing and stuff. And I mm-hmm. don't think that every politician mm-hmm. is doing it for like, you know, their love of the country. Yeah. I think that they love their life and their status and they wouldn't be able to not be who they are because they wouldn't feel legitimate or important. So they maintain their positions and they do what they have to to stay there. And if anyone's going to disrupt that, they're not going to let it. So they're going to put Biden up there and he can't even stay awake or argue. But he so he'll lose and then Trump will stay. And then people will be like, oh, you did your best. (laughs) But nobody, nobody is controlling. See, the scary thing is, though, like there's no one with strings that are like controlling people. No, there's just, not. Well, no, like everyone has free will, but they make those people got where they are because they made choices, probably. Like the, but the most powerful people in the world don't. They're not sure what's going to happen either, right? That nobody anticipated this pandemic or the twin towers coming down. Or, like, I don't know. The point is that we're all just kind of floating around yes there's no there's no one there's no one pulling the strings so once again what's the drama why are you like always so wrapped up in this you should think more about cake all right honey i think (laughs) i will i'm gonna think more about cake that's the show everybody (laughs) thank you for being here thank you deb for stepping in when Mm -hmm. i forgot to book a guest uh i love you very much even though you think i'm some crackpot A rich one with big muscles, and you're very cute. All right. And anyway. Your face is looking real nice. Really? Yeah. You're standing, you're getting quite thin. Oh, I meant to play this song instead. All right. Thanks. Um, guys, that's it. Support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash shitdownpod. Follow me on Instagram, Racine.mike. Follow Deb on Instagram. Oh, you don't have to follow me. That's no? okay. All right. <laughs> follow me on Twitter at Mike Racine and uh, sitdownpod at gmail.com. And uh, kick me a couple bucks on Patreon if you don't mind. Or Venmo me, Michael-Racine-2. I really appreciate it. Like I said, I've been laid off from my job. So um, this is all I got. Actually, you're all I got. You listeners are all I got. We got to support each other. Um, Thank you for listening, and uh, we will see you next week. Or if you're a Patreon subscriber, see you tomorrow, baby. Oh, shit. Damn it. I cut the music off. So stupid. Here we go. There it is. All right, bye, everybody.
What's that? What'd you say? It's great. I'm still recording, though. Yeah. Because I'm playing music. I'm DJing. It's like bonus. It's like bonus. Uh, it's like uh, bloopers. The blooper reel. All right, good night, folks.